Hi everybody, I thought I'd come back with a second video. I didn't like my video from yesterday, so I took it down for multiple reasons, in, uh, including the fact that I didn't use any Bible passages and I was using, it was quite predictive programming heavy, which I don't like to do. And um, a fellow YouTube subscriber convicted me of that. And so I, uh, I felt convicted. So I'm doing a, another video, uh, which is a bit different from yesterday's, but I believe it's even more critical than the one I presented yesterday. So it's entitled The, si the Sign of Jonah and the Day of the Lord. A fiery judgment on the USA and I'll go from here so because I'm gonna go a little bit backwards in time and reference the eclipse that traversed across the United States in 1918 but with that keep watching though I got more content Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever and that's per Hebrews 13 8 and in Luke 21 verse 25 pertaining to the coming of the Son of Man and it says in verse 25 and there will be signs in the Sun in the moon and in the stars and then uh, it goes on further in that passage but this is the one I'm going to be covering specifically with this total solar eclipse that traversed the United States back in June of 1918. So like the eclipse that crossed the United States in August of 2017, and this upcoming one that's on April 8th, 2024, the one that was on June 8th of 1918 was also called the Great American Eclipse. So like the 2017 eclipse, the one that occurred in 1918 actually had a similar track or pathway across the United States, but instead it entered the United States at Grayland, Washington, instead of in Oregon and made kind of more a southerly uh, trajectory with its pathway and exited at Melbourne, Florida. So like this upcoming eclipse on April 8th, 2024, we know that it goes through, it intersects at Little Egypt in Illinois, and in its pathway, there are several cities with the name of Nineveh. So likewise, I wanted to check out if there was anything of significance that the 1918 total solar eclipse uh, went over with its pathway and sure enough there is so the red line shown here is the direct center of the pathway of the 1918 total solar eclipse i don't know the breadth of it i didn't go into that but it passed over mount saint helens volcano and many of you are a younger audience than myself. I'm 63 years old and was alive uh, when Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. So I thought I'd check into this a little bit further and wanted to see also what constellation this total solar eclipse was in. So on the June 8th, 1918 total solar eclipse that went across the United States. It occurred in the constellation of Taurus between the horns of the uh, bull and Taurus means judgment. And the time that it was maximum when the total solar eclipse occurred was at 3.57 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So because that eclipse went directly over Mount St. Helens volcano, 
I wanted to go back and see what date it erupted, and it was on May 18, 1980, at 8.32 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and I remember this because I was in the hospital at the time, and it was on the front cover of every magazine and newspaper because it is the largest volcanic eruption that occurred in the United States in modern times. But here's a picture of Mount St. Helens prior to the eruption then, and here it's, here's what it looks like now. I'm going to put a link to a footage. It's under two minutes. There's several footages out there, but the majority of them are copyrighted. Uh, this one is also, so I'll get flagged, but I'll put it as a link in the description box. But please go take a look at it because it is incredible to watch. And after the eruption, the blast flattened enough timber to build 150,000 homes. So this picture looks like blades of grass, but it's actually timber. And this photo was taken in 2012, where lakes nearest to Mount St. Helens have been partially covered with fallen trees for more than 40 years now. So it was quite an incredible eruption. And here's uh, Mount St. Helens. You can also watch in videos that there was a mud river with just tons of trees that were coming down and it was another incredible sight to see. And I believe there's footage as well on that. So I wanted to see the duration and time between the uh, 1918 total solar eclipse across the United States on June 18th and the time that it went directly over Mount St. Helens in its path, and that was at 3.57 p.m., and the date of the Mount St. Helens eruption on May 18th of 1980, which was at 8.32 Pacific Daylight Time, and the duration between the two, the total solar eclipse, and when the Mount St. Helens eruption occurred was 61 years, 10 months, 29 days, 16 hours, and 35 minutes, and that will be important. Uh, so put that in the back of your mind because I'm going to come back to this information as I go forward. So when I saw this May 18th date, of the eruption of Mount St. Helens, I go, where have I seen this May 18th day before? And I remember that it is 40 days after this total solar eclipse on April 8th that's coming up next month. So in Jonah 3 verse 4, it says, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown, and that's the sign of Jonah. So 40 days after this upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse 2024, you have 40 days, and you end up with May 18th of 2024, exactly 44 years after the Mount St. Helens eruption on the same day. So in Joel 2 verses 30 to 31 it says, and I will show wonders in the heavens which has been occurring and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So this is what will occur prior to the day of the Lord. So here, a lot of people have interpreted this as being a total solar eclipse, which is about to occur. So I, I believe that could be another possible dual prophecy and the moon into blood. So we've had many lunar eclipses, but 
When that eruption occurred in 1980 with Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington, and it was east of Seattle and north of Portland, Oregon, there was so much ash that if you lived in the proximity, especially in the states of Washington, Idaho, and Oregon, that there was so much ash that was pumped out in the sky that it blackened out the sun completely to where it looked like nightfall. And then the moon actually did appear as blood. So I think that could be more so what it's referring to, especially with blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And there were people that perished in this volcano and nearby villages. And so it was uh, a big to do back then. And even states that were a little bit further away from there, there was still so much soot in the sky that the skies were darkened. So here's a graph of the 48 states and the amount of ashfall that occurred over these states. So of course the worst was in proximity to Mount St. Helens, which was two to five inches. And then a little bit further out was a half inch to two inches. And then in this uh, yellow region was up to a half inch, even in Oklahoma. And here was a photo taken at noon in Yakima, Washington on that same date, a couple of hours after the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with the upcoming sol total solar eclipse on April 8th and the sign of Jonah and the day of judgment? Well, again, referring back to the time period, the duration between the June 18th, 1980 total solar eclipse across the U.S. and the date that the Mount St. Helens volcano erupted on May 18th, 1980. Again, it was a duration of 61 years, 10 months, 29 days, 16 hours, and 35 minutes between the total solar eclipse and the Mount St. Helens eruption. So in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So what might seem to us like a long period of time, especially since the 1918 total solar eclipse across the United States. That's been over a hundred years ago. But again, the Lord is not slack with his promise. So with that, looking back, and you might be asking why I mentioned the 61 years, 10 months, 29 days, 16 hours and 35 minutes in the previous slide. Uh, between the duration of time of when the 1918 total solar eclipse was over Mount St. Helens at 357 back in 1918 and the time of the eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980 at 832 a.m. If you look at the numbers, 61 years, 10 months, Taking out the zero and reading it backwards, it's 166 without the zero, reading it backwards. The 29 days, 16 hours can be a, a 2916 and it can be rearranged, transposed to be 1962. And then the 35 minutes, the 35 in reverse is 53. So I'm not a big fan of predictive programming, so this is my only slide with it because it refers to that information on the duration between the 1918 total solar eclipse and the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So when you see the 61 years and 10 months 
and you read it backwards without the zero, the 116, that's the scene from the Back to the Future Twin Pine Malls that was shown on End Time Watchmen's YouTube channel. So the 61 years, 10 months without the zero becomes 116 shown here. And then the 29 days and 16 hours. So 2916 transposed is 1962. And that's the year of Neo's birth that you see on Steve Fletcher 222 YouTube channel. And that's, he was going through the March 11th information and the expiration date being the same date of the towers and they all are all connected uh, with the twin towers but neo's year of birth which is hard to see is 1962 with which is the transposed of the 29 days 16 hours and then the 53 going to the 35 which is also on end time watchman's youtube channel i believe it's in the same video it shows the theater clock with 123, but the reflection only shows the 53 in reverse or an E5. And when you reverse the 53, it becomes 35, which the uh, duration had 35 seconds. And this all points to Mount St. Helens that erupted on May 18th, which is the same date that you get, but 44 years later, when you add 40 days, the sign of Jonah to the upcoming April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse. So I don't think that's of any coincidence. So the sign of Jonah, which occurs on May 18th, 2024 in a couple of months occurs prior to the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord is also mentioned in Acts 2 verses 19 to 20. Whereas I read earlier, Joel 2 verses 30 to 31. But here I'll read Acts 2 verses 19 to 20. And it says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke which sounds like a volcano to me and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord so those occur before the day of the lord and i believe that's what the sign of jonah is pointing to for this may 18th coming up in a couple of months. So again in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 where it states that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So it could take years before it actually comes to pass, but I believe that it's showing that this May 18th, 40 days after this upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024 will be May 18th, 44 years after the Mount St. Helens eruption. So I believe that is a definite sign of judgment to come and the sign of Jonah. And speaking of promises that of the Lord, there's Abraham's promised land, which is also outlined by four total solar eclipses. So in Genesis 15, 14, and 18, here's the full promised land that is spoken of. So in Genesis 15, 14, it says, And also the nations whom they serve I will judge. Afterwards they shall come out with great possession. And then in Genesis 15, 18, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, to your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt, which is the Nile, sh shown here, 
to the great river Euphrates shown here. And this is highlighted in green, the full promised land of Israel that the Lord promised and is not slack for the nation of Israel. And here's Abraham's promised land between the Nile River and the Euphrates River, highlighted here in blue, but it is encircled or enclosed by four total solar eclipses, all shown here. So there was the one on August 11th, 1999, which just transpired. The one, the blue one going up this way on March 29th of 2006, which has also transpired, but there are two right remaining, which is the August 2nd, this way shown in green, and finally the yellow one will occur on March 20th of 2034, and that will be the final total solar eclipse that encircles or encloses Abraham's promised land. So God does in fact use his heavenly signs to show his great works. So I believe that the sign of Jonah will be this upcoming April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse because it has so many cities that it traverses with the name Nineveh and so many other words associated in that pathway that's also connected to Jonah. And this occurs 40 days prior to the day of the Lord, which falls on May 18th of 2024, in my opinion. So I believe these events are about to occur on the United States as judgment, whether it's uh, Mount St. Helens, which I believe is dormant, but it could be something much greater like Yellowstone that erupts and that will be the fiery judgment that comes on the United States being the day of the Lord. So all of these dates are coming upon us rather quickly. I believe that the sign of Jonah is in fact the total solar eclipse that traverses the United States over Little Egypt on April 8th, 2024. And the sign of Jonah is yet 40 days after that per Jonah chapter 3 verse 4. As I mentioned earlier, 40 days after April 8th, 2024 is May 18th. And that's exactly the same date as the Mount St. Helens eruption 44 years earlier. So I think that is the indicator of the fiery judgment that is coming on the United States, whether it is Mount St. Helens, which again, I believe is dormant, but I think it'll be something much greater, like potentially Yellowstone, which will be a really bad judgment day on the United States. But um, so please bear that in mind. And the good news is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. So as Aaron at God a minute says, it's time to get tight with Christ. And there's so many people who explain the gospel a lot better than myself. But please get saved today because the time is very short. In fact, there is no longer any time. Now is the time to get saved and come to the Lord. So please bear all of this in mind. Anyhow, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I wanted to get this out quickly. So anyways, I hope you have a blessed day. And I hope to see you in the sky. So take care.